This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by the Motorola Zoom. Time to get our HD Nation on at Yummy Bacon, tweeted at Patrick Norton, at Robert Heron. Just sold my copy of Avatar on Blu-ray 3D for $125. This 3D stuff is for reals. People are clamoring for content. No, that's, a, that's a shrewd investment right there. That probably <laughs> paid for the whole pack that got you that disc to begin with, unless you had to get the TV, of course. That's a little bit more. But yeah, people, I think it's good timing. You made $125 I mean, on that disc because it's impossible to get Avatar in the 3D Blu-ray version without buying like a Blu-ray player or a television or whatever bundle it's set up with. Scarcity. It's not because people are like, <gasps> I need 3D. <laughs> Maybe you know, that movie, though. I could... I, I bet you that's a popular sale if you need a quick 125 bucks. And it may be the only great 3D movie in existence right now. Yeah, Coraline. That was, oh, I don't know if it's great, true. but I, I found it. It's quality. Awesome. So <laughs> dark. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, what about an HDMI dongle for the iPad too? Huh? Huh? Hey, it works with the iPad, iPhones, at least latest iPhones, uh, mirroring basically only on the iPad too. 1080p support? Well, 720p only for streaming. 1080p, they're saying for. Pictures? Yeah, it's really weird. It's like they're saying they're mirroring, they're supporting 1080p, but then there's like streaming of movies in 720p only. Oh, so if you want to demo, like the whole out, the, the display output on right. the portable device can just be mirrored. Is that what they mean? Mirroring onto the display itself? It's a little messy, right? Because it's it's unclear if it's 720p because that's what iTunes movie are movies are, or if it's 720p for HDCP compliance. Or there's, there's, something doesn't make sense, and we won't know until one of us gets the dongle in our hands. It, it could be a decoding thing too because decoding higher resolutions is right. requires more horsepower than it would say record, uh, decoding something at a lower resolution and 720p is about half as many pixels as 1080p. So. I thought there was going to be enough power in the A5 processor to do we 1080p think. decoding. The first thing I'm going to try as soon as I get that dongle for my <laughs> iPhone 4 is to load up a 1080p file and a 720p file and see which one plays. It'll be nice though to do all my encoding for just 720p rather than say the iPhone 4's format or the iPad's right. format. Have a more HD standard than say the specific resolution of the device. Don't you want which, 1080p output from everything? I would like that, but you know, <laughs> I mean, the files get pretty darn large too. So if I can get a good 720p encode and it's and it's being able to stream that directly to a TV and give me the full quality, hopefully in surround sound, but probably if I'm going to encode it, I'm going to be stuck with stereo most likely. But are, are that's you going to okay. buy an iPad too? No, uh, maybe. <laughs> they, you know what? They, Apple or somebody from Apple called me the other day when I bought one as a gift for somebody and uh, my mom and. Uh, they called me to talk to me about something, but I wasn't around, so and they never called me back. So mm. probably just to say, oh, you know, we have the two version two coming up soon, sir. You know, we can we can sell you a case for that. You can set it to Bob and have it engraved. My my one iPhone product is enough for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough. As I mentioned last episode, thanks to the ever vigilant HD Nation and Texilla audience, I scored a refurbished Optoma HD 180, which is essentially the same exact thing as the HD20 off sellout.woot for 650 bucks. Nice. At Walt All wrote, at Patrick Norton, make sure to check the cost of replacement lamps for the Optoma. It's a scam. Uh, no, actually, bulbs just haven't dropped in price as fast as projectors have. Totally. I mean, yeah. the, basically, they just haven't scaled bulb production in the way that they have decreased the cost of projectors. Projector bulbs are expensive. Those, those lamps, in your case, it's, it's a third of the cost of the whole projection system is the quality, is the lamp module itself. And in high-end projectors, it can get ridiculous. It's like Xeon bulbs for like right. two to four thousand dollars on a twenty thousand dollar projector. Yeah, or even 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 those those affordable like right. six to eight thousand dollar projectors are sometimes affordable. equipped with you know a two thousand dollar. You a said affordable. Well, okay, affordable compared to a twenty five. Air quotes. I mean, yeah, you know. It's the price of a small car. Anyway. The thing is, though, is, is projector bulbs <laughs> are part of the cost. Whether it's a front projector or a rear projector, if you're buying a projector, be aware that bulbs are part of the operating cost. Doesn't matter if it's a front projector or rear projector. Bulbs should last a minimum of 3,000 hours. If there is a low power setting in your uh, projector's setup, see if it's bright enough for you, because you should get a modest reduction in brightness and extend battery life like 20, 30 percent. And definitely shop around because bulb prices. Because I looked at bulb prices, I saw bulb prices were the same bulb anywhere from 140 to 290 dollars. That's so true too. Shop carefully. Just make sure you're getting the one that's specifically made for your device. So <laughs> a, it'll fit properly, but b, you don't want it Won't to be too far out of spec and melt everything. That could be that could be an issue. But 
What about, so we talked about screens. You were kind of horrified that the monoprice project, the monoprice, the f screens up on the, the motorized screens on monoprice were like 300 bucks. You're, you're, you're held on, on getting something that's motorized so it can retract yeah. up and get out of the way. Well, I, 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 mean, I couldn't do a manual one, but I. Totally, but that's, that's. I've got a Harmony remote. I want to hit like exactly. the one button and have everything happen. And, and what surprised me is if you look at the price for tensioned screens where there are either tabs or other uh, materials that hold the screen tight so it's always nice and flat. Those screens tend to be really expensive. Uh, usually, they like start at hundred thousand dollars. They started, yeah. Depending on what size you're looking for, easily can start at you know, seven, eight hundred dollars and go on up. And considering you didn't spend that much just on the projector itself, <laughs> I found something called Favi, F A V I. They're a, I don't know how good. Of, it's basically a Chinese-made brand of projection screens that aren't tensioned, but they're. Very affordable. We're talking a 92-inch screen. I think we picked out for, yeah, for like 175 dollars. Motorized. Motorized. IR and I think it was also you could RF. trigger it with a 12-volt system too if you really want to go. Nice. If you're getting your home automation on, would you? Or do you like? I mean, do you think tension screen? I mean, if you have the money, a tension screen is the way to go. Over the long term, because mm -hmm. if it's not tensioned, there's it's more likely that the screen will develop either curves or wrinkles or something to it over time, uh, especially the action of winding it up and uh, basically unfurling it and furling it back up can when cause it to... When your three-year-old grabs it and starts you, swinging on the bottom? It depends on the quality of the materials too because if it, if it, as it scrolls up and if, if the materials are soft enough to where they can mold nicely as mm -hmm. it rolls, if not, you'll see these little fine crease lines in some projector screens and you know, it, it's sure it still works but you lose that bit of, bit of quality over time and that's what's nice about having something that's actually tensioned or stretched to stay taught and, you know, it that's looked thought, like it was the day you took it out of the box. If there's a breeze in the house, my screen's going to blow back and forth, isn't it? A little bit, maybe. <laughs> it depends. It depends what the air currents are doing and how heavy that bar will be hanging at the bottom of the screen. So, I, I think though, for spending a $650 projector, mating that with a sub $200 screen, that's a good starting point, and you can always take it up from there. You know, if it doesn't work out, hey, you're not out a thousand dollars for a screen. You're only out less than 200. If you have a slightly used tension screen you'd like to sell me, please let me know. But I, normally I would use a painted wall, but that's not an option in my current house. Okay. There's no wall there. Oh, no, that is, that is true. That and is you know what? If all else fails, it, it, you don't have to have a screen with a projector either. I mean, it's, it's nice to have that consistent surface, but you could shoot this into curtains, uh, a wall that's not too textured, anything really, just to get that picture going for you. And you can always do screens and think about how you want to do that down the road. I think it's more important just to actually get the projector itself and you know run your content through it and get used to actually having that as a display device. Did you order the D8000 yet? Yeah, it, the size I want hasn't been released yet. Oh. And, I'm, and I'm, I want to see what LG, and we're talking TVs here, I'm, I'm itching to buy a new TV <laughs> this year. I've had my current uh, LCD flat panel, it's about three and a half years old, probably going on four. It's black levels are nothing the way the new TVs are. Yeah. The liquid inky black you're getting off the latest screens. I'm looking at Samsung's D8000 and they have the 55 inch out right now and they have a 46 inch model and they're also gonna have larger screen sizes too, up to 65 inches I believe. Uh, but I wanna see what LG's doing. I wanna see what Panasonic's new uh, VT30 plasma display looks like. Got a lot of new TVs and they're all starting to trickle out now. I noticed this in that while I was looking at prices over the last couple of weeks, you'll notice that last year's models, mm -hmm. the price stopped declining and then it slowly started going back up and it's like, oh, that kind of just hits me in the head. It's like, okay, the new models new are models about are to be released. So just sit back and see what happens. And now the new models are already decreasing in price slow, slowly over time. So let's fire up a question from Russ who writes in. I have a question regarding my NAS, Blu-ray, and streaming. I've been experimenting with any DVD HD with my DVDs via Twonky. This is what QNAP uses on my PC. This works, it's great, and it's very simple. I would love to stream my Blu-rays as well. I am hugely anti-piracy, and this is purely for my own usage. I understand how I can decrypt the Blu-ray onto my hard drive, but to stream, do I need to create an H.264 or an MKV file? This seems very complicated. I've read that I need to use a demuxer, such as TS Muxer or EAC 3TO to mix the video and audio. Is there an easier process? I don't want to compress, I just want to stream. Please help! Thanks, Russ. Funny you should ask. I do this all the time. Um, streaming a Blu-ray disc or a DVD image file, uh, basically, if, when you, if you, you're converting those discs into image files, I assume that's what you're doing. That image file is pretty easy to play on a PC. Either install a player program that supports the playback of that image file, VLC does this very nicely, or you could use a virtual, basically a DVD drive or a Blu-ray drive that's software-based, and then you mount the image into the software player and play it back using whatever program you prefer. 
Uh, my favorite virtual optical drive app happens to be Slysoft's Virtual Clone Drive. It's free. There are a couple others out there. I would stick with this one unless you've got a reason to not use it. <laughs> free is a good price. Transcoding, though, your main movie from the DVD or Blu-ray into the H.264 format or into an MKV wrapper isn't that difficult either. Uh, you have any DVD HD, and that takes care of the decryption and the protection circumvention. You got to do that. <laughs> and an encoder, uh, tools like Handbrake, Make MKV, or even RIP.264, the Handbrake and RIPBOT being free options, will get that job done if you just want to convert that into H.264 or an MKV file for streaming. And however, if, if you're streaming this content from your NAS device to a home theater PC, I wouldn't even bother with transcoding. I would just simply mount that on the home theater PC and just play it back right off the network. It works really well. I do it over gigabit ethernet. Mm -hmm. I've had less luck doing that over wireless N, although it could just be my wireless N setup. I've heard other people tell me they had no problems whatsoever doing that kind of high bit rate streaming. You also live in a densely packed apartment building. I do, but I'm just like, eh. It should work. <laughs> hey, it's now time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of March 15th, 2011. First up, BMX Bandits. This 1983 Australian cult classic is Nicole Kidman's first movie. This is a region-free release, and despite being an 80s film, Blu-ray.com says that they were, quote, caught off guard by how strong the film's 1080p AVC encoded transfer is, and says it's, quote, vivid and bright with more eye-popping primary hues than a Goddard film, unquote. Extras include an audio commentary with the director, a 38-minute featurette with the cast and crew, and a three-minute piece from an Australian kids show featuring a 16-year-old Nicole Kidman promoting the film. So if you're in the mood for a cheesy but fun feel-good 80s flick, check out BMX Bandits. Next up, The Fighter. This 2010 film is based on the true story of a boxer from Massachusetts, played by Mark Wahlberg, and his ex-boxer brother, played by Christian Bale, who won an Oscar for his performance. With an incredible MPEG-4 AVC codec in a 240 to 1 aspect ratio and a DTS-HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack, Blu-ray.com gives both the video and audio quality 4.5 stars each. This film is region A locked and extras include a director's audio commentary, a 30 minute featurette with the cast and crew, 17 minutes of deleted scenes, and an 8 minute featurette with the real life family of the boxers talking about their family history. Also released this week, Sharktopus. Yes, it's a movie about a hybrid shark slash octopus that terrorizes the town. So it won't surprise you to learn that it's from Roger Corman, who's famous for bringing the campy terror. It's region A locked, and Blu-ray.com says that the MPEG-4 AVC 1.78 to 1 transfer is generally serviceable, but occasionally disappointing, unquote. The lossless Dolby True HD 5.1 soundtrack is solid, and quote, quite good given the quality and origins of the film, unquote. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, the Motorola Zoom. The Motorola Zoom is the first tablet powered by Android 3.0, aka Honeycomb, with a 10.1-inch HD widescreen display, 3D interface, and 1 gigahertz dual-core processor. Fully flash-enabled for video-rich web and tabbed windows for multitasking and Chrome bookmark syncing with Google Maps that you can tilt, rotate, and zoom into 3D with Photoreal Street View. It's 4G upgradable, so you can leap from 3G to Verizon 4G LTE and the mind-melting upper limits of speed. Check out the Motorola Zoom.